Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to, to worship today. We're sort of scrambling a little bit here. Our AV people didn't, uh, didn't show up today, so I drafted Sue to, to click for us, and we'll, uh, uh, we'll have our, our Facebook uh, going. We won't be switching around stuff, so those of you who are watching by Facebook, you get one view, and that's it for the day. Uh, and so uh, we'll, uh, 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 we'll, we'll work on that for, for next week. But thank you for, for being here. Beautiful day. It's going to get a lot warmer, so it's still gorgeous today. Thanks for, for coming out and, and being here today. We will celebrate Holy Communion in a little bit, uh, and all are welcome at the Lord's table. You don't need to be a Lutheran or a member of this congregation. You're welcome, welcome to share, uh, share in this meal. Uh, we've gone to one blended style service, so today the blend is leaning more towards our liturgical, so there'll be more hymns and, and liturgy. Um, as far as uh, the whole transmission thing, the COVID stuff, I've, I've given up. So uh, uh, in terms of trying to say, well, it's an optional kind of thing. If you feel comfortable wearing one, you feel very welcome to do that. If not, uh, we'll leave that decision to you. Just aware that there are always those around us who are more vulnerable uh, than others. Well, let's get, uh, get our, our band up here. This is, uh, we'll begin with a, a hymn just to center ourselves as we, as we come into God's presence here. Uh, our Father by whose name. I invite you to rise if you are, if you are able. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we gather. Amen. Let's confess our sin um, using these words. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us, O Lord. We confess to you that we have sinned by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We ask for your forgiveness. People of God, hear the good news. By grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It's a gift from God. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. Uh, we'll sing another song. Uh, it's called Praise the Father, Praise the, Praise the Son. We... Uh, it's sort of one of the, the new hymns. It's not one that's in the hymn book, but we introduced it oh, a couple months back, 
Um, and I think you can catch on fairly, fairly easily if, you're, if you don't remember or not familiar with it. Praise the Father, praise the Son. Sovereign God, O oh matchless King, the saints adore, the angels sing, and fall before the throne of grace, to you belong the highest praise. This suffering, this passing time, To all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day to you. It's nice we, we pause uh, to be able to, to do that. Like any relationship, uh, relationships with fathers can be complicated, uh, but we, uh, we recognize uh, the best uh, in, our, in our fathers as we, as we gather. Um, traditionally, the church has used father language in, in talking about, our, uh, as a metaphor, our relationship with God. And depending on the relationship you have with your father, that carries different, different meanings. Uh, but it's more, we know that fatherhood is more than simply biology. It's about love. It's about relationship. And to help us think about that a little bit, we've got a little uh, video. I shared this with you a couple of years ago, but that's back when we weren't meeting in person. It was back during just the, the, the online only era of our, of our life together. But I, it was good enough. I want to share it with you again. Good job, Lauren. Okay, I got it. Dad. Okay, don't forget to carry the one. Dad. Okay, and that was delicious. Thank you. Right, hold on there, kiddo. No, just... Dad. Say cheese. Cheese. There you go. Okay, just one more. Hold your trophy up a little bit higher. Dad. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's time to rise and shine. Dad. I love it. Um, no. Dad. Dad. And they were here first. So Dad. We... So you want to go catch a movie at like 7.30 or something? <sighs> Dad. And one more. Okay, one more. 
Wait, 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 come on, just one more, one more. Dad. I'm so proud of you. Now you just gotta get a job. Dad. <laughs> you look beautiful. Oh, Dad. Uh, and stand just a little closer together and move just a little bit to the left, uh, my left, uh, a little more. Dad! Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you've called us, you've made us your own. You know what we need even before we ask. We come before you today in deep gratitude for the many ways in which you have blessed us. Today we especially thank you for all those who are fathers, who have taken the role of fathers in our lives. Guide and strengthen them, surround them with your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Reading from uh, Galatians. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I didn't train you on the sound system, only the PowerPoint here. So, yeah, let's see. What else have we got here? Uh, try that. Good morning. Ooh. Um, this morning's reading is from Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be right reckoned as righteous by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you, as were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Here ends the reading. Thanks, Kathy. Let's sing our, our Alleluia. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The um reality of my impending retirement is really starting to sink in here. I was realizing I, I only got three more, three more sermons I get to, to preach, uh, maybe in my life. Uh, maybe, probably not, but it's... Uh, um, but after, after doing this for 35 years, I was thinking, uh, this, I was feeling this pressure. It says, oh my gosh, I, this has to be, I have to make this really profound if this is my, my last time. And then I realized oh, it's way too late for that, uh, to do that. So we're just going to look at the scripture of the day and reflect on it uh, like we would any other Sunday. The question that I faced was, well, what scripture, what scripture do, we, do we use? During the, 
the, church, the school year, we have the nine-month series. We go through the narrative lectionary. We start in Genesis. We go through all the way through the New Testament. We look at the, the story, uh, the big storyline. But during the summer, then we've always, we've taken a break. And we've uh, focused on one book of the Bible or one theme. And last year, our, our theme was we looked at half-truths, all right? Uh, the year before that, we looked at the life of David. Um, summer before that, we looked at the theology of Dr. Seuss, and then it was the book of Ruth. We looked at the Psalms. We looked at the book of, of Revelation. Um, we spent one summer just working our way through the book of Acts. And so we had all these wonderful types of themes. But this year, I thought, let's go back to what we call the, the, common, the common lectionaries, what many, many churches across the country, even around the world, used to focus in. I thought it would be good to tune in to what many other Christians are, are focusing on today. Um, and then I, I read the passage for the day, and I regretted it immediately. Um, this is one of the most bizarre passages of Scripture that we have in the Bible. I just, uh, you know, it, it just floors me. Uh, it comes from the Gospel of Luke. We find it in, in Matthew and Mark as well. But uh, Luke's version um, goes like this. Jesus and the disciples arrived at the region of the Gerizines, which is opposite of Galilee. As he stepped ashore, a man from the city who had demons met him. For a long time, he had not worn any clothes. He did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried. He fell down before him, shouting, What do you have to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him, it kept it, and so he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Well, Jesus asked him, he says, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back to the abyss. Now on the hillside there was a large herd of swine feeding. Uh, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. And the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd stampeded down a steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. And people came out to see what had happened. And when they, when they came and saw Jesus, they found the man for whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they became frightened. Now those who had seen it told how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. And the whole throng of people from the surrounding region of the Gerizines asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So Jesus got in the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home. Declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. All right, so just your typical demon possession, naked man running around the graveyard, pigs committing mass suicide kind of story. Um, you know, it just sort of preaches itself. Um, obviously, the cultural context uh, between this story and our everyday lives is, is quite different. And as strange as <clears throat> something like demon possession seems to our ears, it was not an uncommon event in the Bible. In fact, it's one of the most common things that Jesus does, is cast out demons. Now, we may not use demon language in our, in our everyday lives, but we know the reality of evil. We know that there is something that is the opposite of good, the opposite of God, something that is evil. We experience it in different ways uh, in our everyday lives. Friday was the anniversary, uh, sad anniversary for, our, for, uh, uh, for the church, the, the Emmanuel 9. If you remember that story, it was six, seven years ago. It's hard to find a story which is more blatantly evil than the story of a, of a young man who joins a Bible study um, and then pulls out a gun and shoots everybody at the Bible study. And this, is, this was a Lutheran kid 
confirmed in the Lutheran Church. The pastor, Rishat, had gone to Lutheran Seminary. It's, it's part of our family. It's part of our story. It's just, it's just so tragic, and it is so evil. Um, it's horrific. I, I'd rather not even think about it, but it's, you can't, we can't turn our face away from evil. Uh, there's times it needs to be confronted. It needs to be named. Um, on the other hand, yesterday we uh, uh, were, took a part of a Juneteenth celebration. Um, again, it's part of the story. We, uh, as we and remember, uh, it's been in the news quite a bit, so maybe you've, been, you've had that quick little recap to say that even though, you know, uh, 1863, we had the Emancipation Proclamation saying that slavery uh, is, is uh, outlawed, we would know the reality was that it was, it's easy to pass a law. It's really hard to change the hearts and minds of people. And it took years uh, before the Union troops could get down to, the, down to Galveston in Texas to enforce, enforce this law. And we still, we know that we still feel the effects uh, of this legacy of slavery in our land. But it's good to have days like yesterday, or today, to be able to, to celebrate um, milestones, working towards freedom, working towards abolishing evil and lifting up what is good. When we see evils uh, in the world, whether it's on a personal scale or societal scale, oftentimes we, we ask the question, why, right? And it's complex uh, for many of these situations. A lot of factors that enter into why this something happened. But the reality is we know that there is something, it is something real, that there is something called evil, which is why Jesus came. I mean, the good news, the gospel, is that evil is not as prevalent or as hard as it can be in our world. It's not the last word. Um, so I want to look today just a little bit at, at two things, the man who was possessed, but also the reaction of the people of, of the community here. First, let's look at the guy. Um, he's not named. Uh, in fact, one of the other gospels say there were two of them. Um, but he was, uh, he was possessed, you know, an extreme form of, of evil. Uh, it's sort of like we, when we confess our sins, we say we are in bondage to sin and we cannot free ourselves. There's something that we don't have control over. We can't cast off the chains our, our, ourselves. Um, and many of us may find ourselves, maybe, maybe not to that same extent, but feeling in some ways being bound, something that keeps us from living life the way that we want to live it. Some of us battle with depression. Uh, for some of us, it's an addiction, uh, all kinds of addictions that are out there. Some live under financial pressure. For some, it is illness or anxiety. I mean, there's voices within and without that, that battle within us. The man in the story didn't have a single demon. He had a, a legion, all right? Roman legion was 6,000 soldiers. So that's a lot of voices uh, going on. But Jesus, as Luke tells a story, he reminds us Jesus is more powerful than any number of demons. And he heals the man. He draws out the name of the demon. That's the first step to overpowering it is to name it and it, it continues to be true today. Uh, if we're going to deal with something, we have to be able to honestly name what it is and then begin to dismantle uh, the evil around us. Sometimes the cure can be miraculous and immediate, as in the story we heard today. Oftentimes it takes much longer. But God, I believe, uses the gifts, uses the abilities of the community of faith to help us do that to heal, to bring goodness, to bring light in the midst of darkness. But we always know it is God's power at work in us and through us doing this mighty act. I uh, heard a couple weeks ago of, of Pentecost, this gift of the Holy Spirit uh, to the disciples, the gift of power, uh, of God's power working through them, the power of, of, of uh, life over sin and death, of bringing new life. Um, there's nothing we have this assurance. There's nothing that we have done or thought or said 
that can keep us, can keep God from loving us. I mean, that's the gospel in its purest sense. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Doesn't mean we don't sometimes feel overwhelmed. We don't feel imprisoned by our fears or possessed. The good news that we proclaim, though, is that God is more powerful, that God come, has come to free us, has come to us as surely as he crossed the sea to go to this man in Gerizim. So the invitation as we gather, uh, but I want to make a special invitation today, is to, to let go of whatever it is that's getting in the way of us and leave it uh, at, the, at the foot of the cross to start fresh. I mean, if, and, uh, if, you, if, if that's, you know, if you can think of something, what is in my life that I need to, what kind of bondage do I need to be, be freed from? We want just to do that. And if you just check out from the rest of the sermon, that's fine. Um, whether it's a big thing or a small thing in your life, my encouragement is not to wait until someday I'll get around to doing that. Um, so let's take a moment right now. Just, just think in your life, what is it that you, might, that you need help? Uh, something that binds you, something that keeps you from the fullness of life that God desires for you. I invite you now just in, in, in quietly just to, to lift that up, lift that up to God, that God's power might be at work in your life to unbind the chains, to bring new life to you, to bring grace in the midst of, uh, of things that maybe just weigh us down. Let us pray. Lord God, powerful Savior, I asked this morning, as you had come so long ago to those who, this man who needed your help, come to each of us here today. You know our point of greatest need. And Lord, we offer that up to you, that you might come, that your goodness, that your power, that your grace might be at work in our life, create in us a clean heart, a new life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Usually we say amen, it's over, but that's, we're only halfway through the sermon. No, uh, there's a little bit here, but I just wanted to make sure we did that and not wait. Well, someday when I get home, I'm going to pray for deliverance, whatever it is. No, we just needed to do it, okay? So what I find curious in, in the rest, uh, is the rest of the story. How does the crowd react to this incredible event. Um, and it's curious. I, I thought, boy, the crowd would just be going crazy and cheering and say, yay, Jesus, you got rid of, you got rid of all the, uh, this, this evil in our life, this triumph of good over evil. In fact, but instead we find them, their response is, is fear. And they, they ask Jesus to leave. They say, please, go away. Go away from us. So... I know what's what's going on. Why is it that, you know, this 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 huge uh, act of deliverance was found to create, and for some, I'm sure for the man it was a great thing. He wanted to go with Jesus, but the, for the rest of the people that were, it created fear in them. Well, one of the things is, is that it's uh, it was a change. And Tim helped us last week. You know, think about change a little bit. How what that's all about. Uh, but change, any kind of change, even change for the better can sometimes be a little unnerving, can be a little fear-producing. They had a system that they had worked out. They knew where the evil was. It was in this guy, right? Uh, the guy who was running around naked out in the cemetery. Uh, they, knew where, what, they learned to live with it because that's where, that's where the evil was. But Jesus come and disrupts the whole system and and uh, all of a sudden makes them think about their lives in a, a different way. If evil was not somehow identified just with this person over there, with that kind of guy. Um, so he disrupts his system. And what if, he, what if Jesus didn't limit himself to the blatant evil that everyone recognized, but actually looked at each of us where maybe that dwelled in us and maybe there would be change happening there as well. I mean, once we let Jesus in, who knows what could happen? 
Maybe it was just the, the, they weren't willing to pay the economic price um, of getting rid of evil. Um, getting rid of evil isn't cheap. Um, ask the owner of the pig herd. Um, maybe the, the evil that we've come, grown accustomed to is, is simply uh, the corporate greed or, or the stock market, uh, uh, the positive report that we like to hear instead of uh, seeing it go the other direction. Maybe the evil that we've just gotten so accustomed to is the lack of affordable health care that we have in this country or that we've got people, even people right here in Prescott that live in substandard housing or are homeless. Um, that there are among us the richest nation in the world, there is hunger and there's malnutrition. Or that there is gun violence, that we, that we can't even think about going to a school or a grocery store without having to wonder, I mean, could that happen here? Or the ugly face of races, racism that continues to raise its head. Um, we could exercise, I believe, all these demons. But there would be a cost. What would it cost us to change our world in those ways? And is that something we'd be willing to pay? Well, the good news, good news of God's incredible love, the gospel is that, it, uh, is that it's free. Now, it's not cheap. It's free. Um, but it costs, in many ways, everything. A new life was given to this man. He's now clothed and in his right mind in, in the story here. And, and the image we had from, we had the, the Kathy read from Galatians, that uh, just as he was, went from being naked to being clothed, the Galatians told us how we, we clothe ourselves with Christ. We put on Christ. We have this new identity, more powerful than any of those things that maybe would divide us. Now, from what we know of the story of Jesus, Usually what Jesus ends up telling people is, um, come with me, follow me, and do this. So it's so strange to hear on our story where Jesus says, you can't come with me. Don't follow me. Uh, he says, go home. Go home to your place. Um, sometimes the, uh, the call to follow um, is, um, takes different forms. In this case, following Jesus meant staying where you were at instead of leaving your home. In some ways, for the man, it probably would have been easier to leave home, to walk away, because everyone knew him and knew the, his story and his background, and, and to live with that every day, it'd be easier just to walk away and start a new life somewhere. There was no way he could hide what he had done, what his life had been like. But because everyone knew his story and he could, he could speak a way that his witness would be more powerful because there was no way they could avoid the story. They knew it was part of their story as well in the community. Christianity is more than simply getting away from problems, getting away from evil, getting away from the world. Uh, it's not come meet Jesus and, and get rid of your problems. More so it's saying come meet Jesus and begin a process of transformation of a, of a broken of a broken world, remain um, and it calls us to remain in this world, and simply in the midst of it all to declare what it is that God has done. I think that's why we when we gather to worship, we don't just come and worship individually. We worship as a community, that we can lift each other up, that we can build each other up, that we can share our joys and sorrows, and remind us how God is at work and continues to be at work in and through us. Well, that's enough for today. Um, let's get our, our <clears throat> band back up here. Um, one of my favorite hymns, uh, this, is my father's, uh, this is My Father's World. Um, and usually when I, when I sing the song, I always think, oh, this is all about uh, creation and birds and trees and grass and stuff like that. But then it reminds me that uh, <clears throat> the third verse becomes so powerful that, that don't let me forget that even though evil seems so strong, God still is triumphant over that. So we, uh, we sing of the beauty of creation, but also the power of God 
over all that is broken. This is my Father's world. confess our faith using words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to rise. You've been sitting for, for a while here. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you. I invite you to greet those around and share with them a, a sign of, of peace. May be seated, and we will continue with the receiving receiving of our offering. Here, so. we'll just start them. Just pass them back. We'll get them. Candy can pick them up when they get to the end back there. They'll, they can get them to the back for you. So.
That's a golden oldie, so nice to have that. After, maybe we should sing that some Sunday. That would be a nice song. To... Let us pray. Lord God, as we come before you today again, we thank you for those who have been fathers in our lives. We pray blessings on them. Lift up all families, however they are made up, that your love might shape and guide our relationships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who are in need of your healing presence, be it physical, emotional, or spiritual. We thank you for all those who are involved in the healing arts. This morning, we especially pray for little baby Iris, who um, was born just a week ago, but is facing heart issues and problems with her. I pray, Lord, that you would be with her and all the surgeons and all who care and work in her life. Lord, in your mercy, our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who are grieving the loss of, of loved ones. We pray for the Poff family who just a few days ago had a funeral for Mark's dad. We pray for the Friedel family who will be laying Denny's remains to rest later today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember with sadness the Emmanuel 9 and all who continue to face prejudice in their lives all who suffer from senseless gun violence. Give us the courage we need to take the steps to end this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are preparing for marriage in the coming weeks, as well as those who gather to celebrate anniversaries, like the Linseth celebrating 60 years of marriage later this week. Be with all who travel during these days, grant safety and joyful homecomings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us a way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples. He said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same way after supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks. He said, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Invite our assistants to come forward. Um, uh, and as soon as we are prepared, we'll invite you to come to receive the, the bread and wine. There is a, 
a regular bread and a gluten-free bread. There's also uh, wine as well as grape juice. The grape juice is a lighter colored and the, and the wine is a darker colored. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and always. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, Almighty God that you refresh us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Okay, a couple announcements. We have a, I invite you to stay around for some fellowship. Kelly, what do we got in the oven? Banana chocolate chip muffins. All right, so make sure you don't run off for that. I invite you, as well, if you want to walk through the, the prayer garden, the, the liatris, the, the spirea, the honeysuckles, are also, and the lilac tree is starting to bloom. Uh, there's little flowers on the sedum, so... Uh, walk, take a walk through there so, until, before it gets so hot you can't do that. Uh, but enjoy that. Maybe take your coffee out there and, and stroll through the garden uh, to do that. If you haven't ordered your 50th anniversary shirt, there's sizes there. You can, you can sort of figure out what size you want to get so we can get that going. Marvin Marsha, we got a big party fr on Friday, right? And what's the time on that again? 4.30 to 7, just come here and celebrate with Marvin Marsha 60 years. <laughs> Woohoo! It's amazing. Any other announcements we need to be making? We got a bunch of our guys heading to Canada as we speak. I'm not sure if they've hit the border yet or how, how soon. It'll be a little while. All right, so keep them in our thoughts and prayers as well as they're, they're traveling. They, 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 they drive somewhere and then they get in a float plane and go the rest of the way by float plane up there. So we'll, we should have some good fish stories uh, by, uh, by next week. Let's get our band back up. Um, our closing song, it's, uh, it's a nice little uh, Swedish samba uh, that... Um, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll break it. We'll sing it together the first time, and then we'll we'll break into parts. Uh, we'll have the women uh, do a part, and then uh, and so Karen and Diane will lead you, and then Tom and I will bring in the men. We'll sort of do a um, uh, a second part on that. So, but we'll sing it all together the first time, all together. So let's rise as we as we do that. <laughs>
go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.